word I had for today that I felt to release, I've had, I've had this word since 2003. Oh. I have shared it many times over the years. It had a resurrection in 2014 and the Lord had me declaring it again in full force. And it's even in my Avenger book, it's a chapter in my Avenger book, or actually the Avenger surrounds the concept. And then it just, God dropped it in my spirit again two weeks ago. And I really, and I feel like, you know, the Lord says in his word that he, before he does something, he declares a thing before he performs it. Sometimes we think when he's declaring it, that is that season. But he's saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And sometimes we don't know when that's going to do, when he's going to do the do that he says he's going to do. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Well, yeah, that's good, God. Happy for that. Just come along and do it. So, uh, and then, but this last time I heard this, because I'm like, I heard this, Lord. But this last time I heard this, it was a different. There was faith to receive it. The Lord saying that in this season is a season of recompense and payback. It is a season of double portion recompense and payback. The Lord gave me Isaiah 61, 7 in 2003. And it's been mulling in my heart for all of these years. And I've been saying, when is that happening, Lord? You've been speaking this a long time. Then in 2013, he came to me and he said, tell my people I'm coming as the avenger. I'm going to avenge them. I'm going to give double portion recompense for them. I'm coming to punish their enemies. I'm coming to give turnaround. I'm coming to give payback. And then two weeks ago, the Lord said to me, I was, I was having a bit of a conversation with him and I was saying, you know what, God? I, I, I'm, I'm a bit over the rip-off. <laughs> huh? There was, there was some uh, certain instances, even just over a family member I was praying for, not even really my own thing, and I was praying for a family member and I was just like, this, that last year, Lord, there was a lot of rip-off. I'm not okay with that. It was, it was significant rip-off. And I heard the Lord, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to the Lord, dealing with this frustration in my heart, going, I'm not okay with this. Because he, he gave me a dream uh, about this situation reoccurring this year. I said no. And so I knew I had to intercede. So I started interceding over this dream that God had given me about this rip-off. And I said to the Lord, right, I'm, I'm Lord, the rip-off. So I'm more in an intercession for the breakthrough of please don't let that happen again. That's where my mind is. My mind's not even in payback. My mind's not even in a recompense. I just want to stop the cycle of the rip-off just so that we can be at peace. And God said to me, see, God has got better ideas than we do. And God said to me, I'm going, Lord, the injustice, blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, so clear, he interrupted me. I'm driving near Madriba. I remember where I was at the lights. And he said to me, so ask me for the recompense. And I went, yeah, baby. I had faith. This isn't Anita now saying, God, you promised. God, you've been saying, going to God. This is God saying, ask me for the recompense. And I saw it. And he said, I'm going to recompense what no man could have given that person to start with. I'm going to do more than what they could have done to get to where they wanted to be. I'm going to override their ability and someone else's ability to stop them. God says, I'm going to recompense beyond what the enemy has stolen. You thought you would have been in a good situation if the enemy hadn't touched that. Well, let me tell you, you're going to be in a better situation when I am finished. It was so good. I nearly wanted to stop the car and do a dance. <laughs> oh, I'm finally God. We're nearly 20 years later. Oh. But in, I'm so excited because this is so real to me. This is so real. And this is the season of turnaround. This is the season of overturning from the head, from the tail to the head. God is going to turn it around. He's going to give payback. It's a double payback. It's more than what God, that the enemy stole from you. It is more. Come on. Think 
think about the stuff that the enemy's taken. What has he robbed? It's going to be more. God's going to give you more. He's a good, just God. He's fair. He's not just going to go, oh, well, there you go. If it's years, he's going to restore the years that the canker worm and the locust has stolen. If it's relationships, if it's people, if it's finance, if it's destiny, what is it? Is it your health? God says that this season he's going to turn it around. It is recompense season. Not just turn it around so that you can be okay. He's given payback. God's paying compo. It's compo time. And when God pays compo, he's not some dodgy insurance agency trying to, you know, avoid the issue. And sometimes we think, you know, oh God, and we're begging him. He's like, oh, when I pay compo, man, it's nothing like on this earth. So this is the season. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it because I went into it. When God said that to me, I went into it. And I went, this is that. Like Peter, he stood up and he said, this is that, spoken by the prophet Joel. How many hundreds of years ago? It don't matter how long ago God spoke to you. This is that, God says. Amen. This is that. This is the season. And God is going to compensate. And it is going to blow your mind. I'm ready for it. Double portion, Lord. Double portion. Double portion time. So I just want to, uh, you know, go to Isaiah 61, verse 7. This is one of my favourite scriptures of all time. I've hung on to it with my life. And you've got to do that with promises. Instead of your former shame, I'm going to read it in the Amplified, you shall have twofold recompense. In the, in the, uh, the King James it says, instead of your former shame, you will have double Instead of dishonour and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Let me tell you, joy is going to be your portion. Joy is going to be coupled in this space. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double what they had forfeited, everlasting joy. Here we go, joy twice. What did Sasha preach about last week? Joy. Huh? It's the season of joy. It's the season of recompense. The Lord says that you're going to rejoice in your portion. And this word shame, it says, instead of your former shame, in the Hebrew it means the condition of feeling confused. You know, sometimes you might be confused when things happen and go a different way that you expected them to go. Why did that happen? In this family member I was praying about and the, the injustice that was going on in their life, it, we were praying over stuff and still there was a robbery. And I was like, how can the devil steal and we're praying? God's like, don't worry, I'm just setting her up for a bigger harvest. I'm just setting her up for a bigger harvest because I want to show myself strong in the months and months of my people. So if you've been ripped off, I was thinking about it. So, I, you know, it wasn't really, pers for me personally last year, wasn't a, necessarily a big, a, a, like a, sense, a season of rip off, but I saw all around me people, my friends, different family members, different things happening and it just seemed like people were just getting ripped off everywhere. And do you know nations were ripped off last year? Corruption, ripped off. But that's okay because God's going to compensate every rip off. Amen. I don't want to be ripped off. That's right, Mushy. That's why your song's coming out because it's timing. <laughs> it's true. It's a timing song. He wrote that back, what, 23 years ago or something? You know? I don't want to be ripped off because the enemy is a rip off merchant. And there was so much rip-off last year because the enemy knows there's about to be a breakthrough of kingdom coming on earth. He's trying to disrupt the timeline of the ages. He's trying to disrupt the, the, the movement, but he can't interfere with the movement of the kingdom. It's bigger than him. It weighs a lot more. Heavier. It's going to squash his little pea brain head. But he tries everything, and the only way that he's got is to deceive us to think it's not going to happen. To, to make our hearts... Disappointed to hope deferred makes the heart sick, to make our hearts sick, to make us feel like it's never going to happen. There was things in our family last year that went down that we, I couldn't understand it. I'm 
oh, hang on a minute, I've interceded over, I've been praying over this. But I, I went, oh, as soon as God told me, it wasn't just the person I was praying about. I said, right, that's it. You said you're going to give compensation. And this thing I was praying about really wasn't a life-altering situation. It was just a bugbear in my heart. Do you know what I'm saying? And, I, and as soon as God said, well, ask me for recompense. All right, right, well, I'm going to. I'm going to just do that. This person, what happened here, what happened there, what happened, oh, yeah, 10 years ago, oh, this, that, everything I've been storing, yeah, we're going to have some recompense, all right. You've got to get aggressive in the spirit. God didn't say, I'm going to give you recompense. He said, ask me for the recompense. We are to take it. We're to go to the enemy's camp and take back. We are the sons and daughters. I'm going to, I'm going to prove it to you scripturally. How about that? How about it? Right, let's go. So shame here is uh, an emotion, a strong emotion. It can be embarrassment, guilt, unworthiness, disgrace, dishonour, condemnation. It could be what you've done or what others have done to you. Doesn't matter, God says, because these children of Israel, they were shamed because of their rebellion, right? God says, no, but I'm going to have you inherit the land anyway. I'm going to come and I'm going to bring payback and recompense. I'm going to restore to you double that you forfeited, Amplified Version says, you forfeited through your silliness, right? We can do stuff through our silliness and we forfeit and we, you know, we, we make silly decisions and we reap bad harvests and we think, oh, it's all over. No, no, no. God's bigger than you. If you're humble and you come to him, God says a contrite heart he will not despise. He will not despise a contrite heart. That's why he loved David so much and he messed up so much, but he loved David because David had a contrite, repentant heart. And God will never despise that. He'll never turn away from that. And this is the time the prodigal's coming home. This is the time of the turnaround in every... Oh, I see it. I see it. Right, so where you've, been, where you've felt disappointed, it comes from the root word pale, to be disappointed or to have delay. Have you had delayed promises? Have you had things that look like they've been held off for 100 years? Yeah, God says, instead, for instead of. Don't you love it? Instead of. That means in replace of. In replace of your delay. Oh. I love what Bill Johnson says. He says, with delay, God's just, it's just accumulating interest. Huh. It means to be disappointed, confounded, which means to be confused. As I said before, circumstances can be thrown into disarray and disorder. You can be blindsided by the enemy. That can happen. That's being confounded. It's all in that word shame in the, in the Hebrew. Or to be long. Right. Then it goes on. And it says, you're going to have twofold recompense instead of that. In that place, I'm going to give you the double. I'm going to recompense you. He's going to pay compo. He's going to give you repaid, paid back, double as much. It's a season of payback. And then it says, in, um, instead of dishonour and reproach, I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to prove that you take it back, right? Instead of dishonour and reproach, you will rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess double. You shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be yours. So, okay, you shall rejoice in your portion. Rejoice in the Hebrew means shout aloud for joy and sing for joy and to triumph, right? You're going to have a victory shout. Portion in the Hebrew means you're going to, look, look at this, look at this, listen. This is mind-blowing. You're going to rejoice in your portion. Portion in the Hebrew means to occupy by driving out the previous tenants and possessing in their place to seize, to rob, to inherit, to expel, to impoverish, to ruin, to cast out, to consume, to destroy without fail, take possession, seize upon and succeed utterly. Come on. That's what rejoicing in your portion looks like. You're going to be laughing your guts out while you're kicking the enemy out. Come on. What have you had stolen from you? What is yours? You've got to get a fire and say, no more, Jack. It's time for payback. Oh, I got the fire in me when God spoke that to me. I, I was like, right, that's it. I've had a gut full of this. You've got to have a gut full. 
You gotta be, Sasha says you gotta be sick and tired of being sick and tired. All right. So I'm gonna reread to you what, now we've broken all the Hebrew down, I'm gonna read to you what it says. Right? It's a bit long winded, but you ready? Instead of experiencing shame, guilt, embarrassment, unworthiness, disgrace, dishonour, dis discredit, disrespect, uh, disappointment, delay, dis uh, unimportance and condemnation, instead of being confused to the point of nearly giving up by delayed promises and being confounded by circumstances which threw your life into disarray and disorder, I, the Lord, will compensate you for loss and repay you with twice as much honour, credibility, approval, acceptance, hope, vision, restoration, peace, joy and fulfilment as you would have had if you had not have experienced the shame. You will be victorious over the enemy that is occupying the inheritance I've given you and you will shout aloud with a great shout as you drive out, consume, destroy and expel your enemy. You shall impoverish his presence and succeed utterly when you seize upon, take possession of and inherit what I've promised you. You shall go in and receive and retrieve a double portion of the original promise and everlasting joy will be yours. That's what that scripture says. Come on. What, what hope? What promise? So God says in Job 22, 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favour shall shine upon your ways. Decree, get this. This is why we've got to have the word of God in our mouth and we've got to do it. Yes and amen, God, I agree. Decree means to cut down, destroy, divide, exclude and decide, decree and snatch. So when you decree a thing, you are cutting and dividing the enemy's plan. You are cutting and dividing his work in your life. You are destroying it and you're snatching back, you promise. You will decree a thing. Come on. We're going to do some decrees. That's why I'm doing communion today. We're going to seal it in the blood, man. There's power. Sorry, Soph, I took over Soph's communion, but I said, no, nah, we're sealing this message in the blood today. We're going to the enemy's camp and we're going to seal it. We've got, the, we've got the emblems. This is our legality. We're going into the enemy's camp with legality of the blood. It's done. It's a finished work, Jack. You're a liar. It's finished. And we're going to apply that. It's like being policemen in the realm of the spirit. We apply the blood. We apply the finished work of the cross. We apply the victory. That's what it means. By faith. By faith we apply the victory. I've seen such power when I've applied the victory just with the emblems of communion. We're going to divide the cycles. We're going to divide the work of the enemy. We're going to divide the assignments. We're going to divide all the rubbish. We're going to cut it down. We're going to destroy it. And we're going to snatch our promise back. And we're going to expect double. Come on, expect it. I don't care. Don't, don't let unbelief, don't let fear rob you. We shared two weeks ago, I shared about uh, fear not. Remember about expanding the borders of your tent? Fear not because you will not be disappointed or ashamed. Sometimes we're fearful to step into believing God because it hasn't worked so many times. God says, don't let fear stop you. We're going to step in by faith. Come on, with faith, you got to, you, you know what? It's all or nothing with faith. There is no plan B. Did you know that? There's no plan B with faith. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. And that's the place where breakthrough is, all or nothing. Believe in with all you have. Everything that you can, everything that is within you. Okay, so establish, you're going to decree a thing and it shall be established, means to rise, ordain, perform, remain, uh, strengthen, succeed, confirm and accomplish. So we're going to decree a thing and we're going to succeed in it. And it's going to be accomplished. And you know what? Established means it can't be uprooted. It can't be taken. When something is born, when the, that which is born of God overcomes the world, even our faith. Something that's born of the Spirit through faith, the enemy can't take from you. He can't take it because it takes faith to get it. And so he hasn't got faith. So he can't rob it from you. How about that? Huh? He doesn't have those virtues. He has no access to faith. So all he uses is fear to stop you using faith. Because he knows once you've got it, he can't touch it. 
He might pretend he can, but he can't. Verse 8, Isaiah 61. For I, the Lord, love justice. Look at this. And I hate robbery and wrong with violence or a burnt offering. I hate robbery. So the Lord, when he said to me in 2013, I'm coming as the avenger. He said to me, tell my people I'm coming as the avenger. I'm going to take vengeance. I am going to bring retribution to the enemy. I am going to bring payback because I hate robbery. And the, what does the Bible say in John 10.10? 10, the enemy comes to what? Steal is the first thing. Steal, kill and destroy. And sometimes he does all three in one go. But, the, but we're dealing with the thief today who's come and stolen and then he's come to kill off your destiny, kill off relationships, kill off life, kill off and destroy hope. Well, we're just saying that's it. Jesus came to give life, so we're going to decree resurrection life through the power of the blood and the victory of the cross. We're going to see old promises come alive. We're going to see dry bones get raised up today. We're going to see the breath of God bring resurrection life. And I will faithfully, look at this, and I will faithfully, God is so faithful, and I will faithfully give them their recompense in truth. Hello? I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will do what I said I'm going to do. I'm not a liar. I'm not going to lead you on. I'm not going to have a carrot in front of your face. I'm faithful and I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to recompense you in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant and league with them. You know, I went to bed at 11.11 last night. I've been seeing 11.11 a little bit lately. I'm like, hmm, interesting, Lord. And as I was just falling asleep, I just felt to look at my clock. It was 11.11 and I just knew that the Lord, because he prompted me to look. And I went, oh, okay, interesting. But Hebrews 11.11 says this, because that Sarah considered the Lord faithful, She was able to conceive in her barren womb because she considered God as faithful, not because she had all this great faith and she was just this superstar woman. In fact, she actually laughed when the Lord said he's gonna, she's going to give birth to Isaac. She just burst out laughing. She was like, you're kidding, right? This old bird... Abraham don't think this is too, too attractive. <laughs> this old bird. And the Lord said, why are you laughing? See, God doesn't understand our unbelief. Do you know that? He asks us to have childlike faith. Why? Because that's how he is. It's simple. Why, why are you laughing? Like, why are you laughing at that? Come on. Why are you not believing that? Why, why, what? Can't I do what I said I'm going to do? What, am I either God or what, what is this? Why, why are you laughing? Huh? Oh, well, because this doesn't happen ever. And, uh, you know, 90-year-old woman having a baby, it's just, it's just never been heard of before. So? What if God wants to do something in your life you've never seen and thought was possible? So? To God it's like, so? What did I say like two weeks ago? God's about to perform against the norm. He's about to do some stuff that's not normal. Huh? Yeah. He's going to do some stuff that's not normal. Well, Sarah giving birth at 90 is not normal. Oh, it's not normal. So God's going to perform against the norm because he's faithful. So let's step into Hebrews 11.11 today and consider God faithful. Let's consider him. Let's, let's look at him to be faithful to what he said. You know, he's got, the, he's got the ability. We just have to consider him true to his word instead of laughing because we think it's impossible. Huh? Yeah. Come on. I'm ploughing your heart for faith. I'm ploughing. I don't feel you're finished yet because I'm not just going to say some prayer just because we're going to wrap it up for the day. No, we're here to do a job. We're here to play our hearts to get faith so that you can inherit and we're going to get a breakthrough. Right? So let's consider God faithful. Let's consider him faithful. So all you're so and you're laughing, let's just go, all right, God, sorry. Like Sarah's like, oh, my gosh, I've been caught out. 
Oh, 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 well, oh, well, I wasn't laughing. Well, yeah, I heard you. <laughs> That's what God said. Well, yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. All right, well, we repent. We repent today, Lord. Ha <laughs> ha! We repent for not thinking that you're able. Because we, we repent for confining you within the realms of the natural. We repent for having that picture and that, that, that limited imagination of what you are able to do. And actually, in that space, we repent for actually not believing you at your word. And we choose today, Lord, to step into Hebrews 11.11 11 and consider you faithful. And we say, perform against the norm, Lord. Let a seed be sown in a barren place and bring forth a hundredfold harvest. Thank you, Lord. You think about it, right? You look at this. What she gave birth to, Isaac was bearing fruit of. A seed came in her womb that brought forth a harvest out of a barren place. Well, what did Isaac do? That seed of faith, come on, you've got to see this, was actually in Isaac's DNA. That was in his DNA. And when he was in a land of famine, he sowed anyway because that seed of promise was in his DNA to overcome barrenness. And so he sowed in the land of famine and reaped a hundredfold. Come on. We're up for the hundredfold. Do you know a hundredfold means re reaping a harvest at its fullest measure? The Lord says you can have 30, 60. I want the hundred. Give me the hundred. Hundredfold return. And sometimes it happens in a barren place. It, it's a performing. The hundredfold is the miraculous. The hundredfold is the performing against the norm. The hundredfold is when God decides to show up and say, you know what, you're 90, but that's okay. You're past your age, you're past your season. No, only in man's mind, because I just like to blow and make the foolish things of this world confound the wise. He just loves to do it. He loves to mess man up. Mess them up. He does. Thank you, Father. We're going to consider you faithful. Ha <laughs> ha. Doesn't matter how long, Sarah. Doesn't matter how long, Hannah. I don't break my promise. I'm going to remember you, God says in this hour. I'm remembering you. Don't you love it? Ha <laughs> ha. All right. We're going to pray with this emblem of victory and we're going to oh feel that anointing thank you father we're going to decree a thing and it shall be done now i'm going to decree and pray just to make it smoother you're going to agree okay with everything in you because this is going to be a corporate prayer, God knows, where two or more are gathered and agree on any one thing, it shall be done. That's his word. So we're going to agree with his spoken word that he said, ask me for recompense. So Father, we thank you, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the token of your blood and your body that you have given us access to all redemption. Lord, that you, Jesus, are the repairer of every breach. You are the mender of every gap. And we just say this is that season, Lord, of turnaround. We are asking you, Lord, for the recompense. Oh. We ask you for the recompense, Lord, for the double portion recompense. Where the enemy is stolen, where the enemy has ripped off, instead of our former shame, instead of dishonour and reproach, instead of hopelessness, confusion and disarray, Lord, instead of unworthiness, rejection, we declare a double recompense of favour. We say this is the day of vengeance and the favour of our God. We say this is the season of recompense. 
and payback and, and re retribution on the enemy. Oh, heart. Lord, the seasons where we've endured unforeseen circumstances, where we've been perplexed and confused and disappointed, where we felt dry and hopeless, we say let there be a double portion, restoration of vision and hope and restoring of promise. We say all past disappointments, regret, grief over loss. Let it dissolve now in every person's life here in Jesus' name. Father, let the reproach be rolled away. Thank you, Father, that you would heal every spirit of grief. You would pull it out right now. Every spirit of grief and disappointment, discouragement, we say, let it be removed right now in Jesus' name, uprooted from our hearts. We thank you for that, Lord. Where hope has been deferred and made the heart sick, oh, Lord, we ask for healing, life and power to come now in Jesus' name. <laughs> We decree every, where there's been poverty and lack that's brought shame, we declare a twofold recompense of blessing. We say, let the wealth of the wicked be laid up for the righteous in this hour. We thank you, Father, that you have blessed the borders of our inheritance, spiritual and natural, and I release that over every person now. Father, that they walk in and receive the fullness of the borders, Lord, that you, that you have given us. You have said you will let our lines fall in pleasant places. That's what you said. And so we just say, let the lines fall in pleasant places. Let the borders of our portion be marked by your blood. And we say every trespass, every robbery, every thief that has been within the borders of our portion, we evict you now in Jesus' name. We say, go. Right now in Jesus' name, according to the authority and the finished work of the blood of Jesus Christ. We rejoice in our portion. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. Yambasia, let the enemy, let the thief steal no more. <laughs> ah, Rabashe, you said you led captivity captive, so we just declare and decree that right now. We just loose that curse of stealing, robbery, delay. We say it's finished now in Jesus' name. Fush. Lord, heal our land, we say. Lord, let the, let the portion where the enemy has brought affliction in our lives, where there's been a, a tearing up and affliction, where there's been... Sore areas, Father, now we are loose the healing balm of Gilead to flow in the land of our inheritance. Whatever that looks like, spiritual and natural, Lord, whether, whatever that looks like, our, our family members, Lord, let there be healing flow. Our hearts, our minds, our, our, our beings, our destiny, our life, Lord, let the healing power of your resurrection life now flow in that land where there's been barrenness and, and death. Father, we say let there be life now in Jesus' name. We speak the life and the power of the blood of the life in the soil of our portion. Let it bear fruit now in Jesus' name. Bear fruit. Let the, our land be fruitful and multiply. I'm just going to decree this over you. We're going to do some decrees. I'm decreeing this scripture. I believe this is the hour for Amos 9. Thank you, Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall, shall melt. And therefore, everything barren and unfruitful shall overflow with spiritual blessing. I declare that over every person's lives here today, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, you said you will bring back the exiles of your people and they'll build the waste places and inhabit them and they'll plant vineyards and drink wine from them and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit for them. And you will plant them upon the land and they shall no more be torn up out of the land which you give them, says the Lord. 
I thank you, Father, for the boundaries and the portion that we are planted and rooted and no longer will there be an uprooting. No longer will there be a robbery. But now I say, every one of, every one of us and those hearing and agreeing, Lord, will inherit their portion and eat the fruit of their labours. We say the devourer is rebuked where the, where the harvest has been stolen before its time. We say we destroy that cycle of stealing harvest. We say hundredfold return now in Jesus' name. Yes. <laughs> we say turn around, Lord, that you are making now us the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We thank you, Father, that we will rejoice in our portion. Hush, crash to Kembrayasi. And Lord, we say, let it be unto us according to your word, as Mary said so humbly and simply. When you began to perform against the norm in Mary's life, and it blew her mind, but all she could respond was, let it be, Lord, according to your word. So today we say, after everything you've said, let it be, Lord, according to your word. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat and drink and seal it in our beautiful new covenant through the shedding of Jesus' blood and the, his body on the cross. Father, we thank you for this. We seal your promise in your blood, in Jesus' name, amen.